and welcome back to the third installment of the Gotcha Iceberg. Today, I'll be covering the deep waters. Before we start, and before I do all my silly advertisements, I have to say that yes, the watermark at the bottom corner isn't a joke. I would have edited, edited this on CapCut, like I did with my two previous videos, but it kept crashing on me when I attempted to make a longer video and to add constant overlays to the video, so just bear with me here. This iceberg was made by someone named Keith is okay, so please go check out their channel as they allow me to cover this iceberg. And I have socials, a Patreon, and a Discord server, so go and join the community. Now onto the iceberg. So why Doggy got caught tracing Beowulf? This started out when they were caught copying some aspects of Beowulf's VTuber model. The only thing that is blindly stolen are the sleeves for the model. And pretty soon, Bio made a video on the situation, not attacking Doggy in the video. Literally after Bio's video was made, Doggy apologized for the VTuber theft. And there were presumably no hard feelings on either side, right? Well, Doggy started to ta trash talk Bio by saying they should have taken down the video where they pointed out the theft. And Doggy saying that the rep is now ruined. And making community posts on it as well, because why not? Doggy based their claims on the fact that Bio didn't blur or cover up the name of their ch channel and claimed fans were going after them. So Doggy got off lucky, for now. So later down the line, Doggy was the one having their content stolen from them. Why Doggy posted a certain community post ranting about others stealing a video. But why Doggy has also been getting her content stolen on TikTok. But the thing is, people all over TikTok are constantly stealing content, so that isn't a big surprise. So there's that. I really couldn't find anything on this person, so someone's doing a good job hiding whatever is going on with this person. So there was a situation involving Vin, Zanako, and Stella that all began with them shipping their own characters with each other's characters. And that really shouldn't really mean anything. All of the parties gave permission to have their characters shipped since they're all friends. And since Stella and Vin were dating, people began to ask, what about Zan Nako? And I can see how that would become very annoying very quickly for viewers to disregard that they're all human with real thoughts and feelings. I, I Straw Bear, who will be coming Straw Bear for now on, is someone who makes gotcha memes. Before the drama, she had 500 subscribers. But then after the drama, she had 1.5 thousand subscribers. She was talked about because of her apparently passing away. And this was because of other gotcha tubers like Gotcha Ash or Olivia sending hate towards her way. But it turns out she was still alive. But this all started when Strawbear was caught copying Burizo and Z's characters. And according to Strawbear, she claimed that the others had stolen from her instead of it being the other way around. Then she proceeded to make a video to show proof of what she claimed was going on. Also, she remade Burizo's honey pie meme after she came back from her parent break when people thought she actually died. She lost credit still, but it looked very identical to the original. Strapper said that she would take her video down if Burizo felt uncomfortable with the remake. And then when Burizo came out and said that they were uncomfortable, Strawberry did not in fact take the video down. Eventually she did take it down, but it was only an enlisted video, meaning if anyone had the link to it, they could view it. People have also accused Strawberry of racism because she has used Japanese text in an aesthetic way, but I feel like I can't speak much on this because I'm not Japanese. But then Strawberry decided to respond to the racism accusations with this. She also said that she's black, so she can't be racist, which is completely false because anyone can be racist towards any group out there. Now on to her faking her own death. It started with the user named Gotcha Ash making hate videos on Strawberry under the guise of rant videos. Strawberry would then claim that Gotcha Ash was being run by Berizo but then later on would claim the account was run by her younger sister. And in a post she made by Gacha Ash, there was a second 
where people saw her home screen. The home screen was a picture of Strawberry's dog. Then the picture of the same dog was posted a week later, so it wouldn't be too far off if the account was actually run by her sister like she claims. And now onto the channel spread of rumors about Strawberry's passing away. Strawberry has stated that the account was being run by her friend Kenzie, claiming that Kenzie's younger sister posted a video about Strawberry passing away. And then Kenzie was also confused because she didn't have a sister. So our story begins with a channel being created on the 12th of September called Black Circle. And this channel was supposedly mind hacking other channels, causing issues within the gacha community and 12 other channels that were affected. And of the 12 channels, were two channels that were still alive. Then a channel called Marsley Rosie began a live stream, and a person by the name of Veronica said that she was going to hack another channel called Ida. This attracted a lot of attention from the gacha community, so how does Acme come into play? Well, she was really involved in the case. She was manipulated by someone named Isaac to make a faking post, I'm assuming about her health. But if Akami didn't comply with these questions, they would physically attack someone named Yuki. Which the story of making threats towards Yu this Yuki person is a whole other mess, so we'll move on now. This all started when two people made a video on Kai. In the first video made by Lokurosu, they go on a rant about how Kai is ruining the gacha community, as well as Kai making mini movies where the joke in Joker and Holly Quinn where they're not portrayed as the crackheads they were, so that kind of ruined the film, I guess. But anyone can make a character that acts a certain way completely different from how they would actually act in a situation. Kai has also made some questionable choices in content, but we'll get back to that soon. And by scene, I mean now, because guess what? Lokurosu's video was clickbait, and they made a video where they went over how it was clickbait, and then suddenly pulled it out the I was only doing a little trolling card out of their ass. But, uh, Kai also made a video with a trauma meme, and judging by the thumbnail of it, uh, yeah. There is also this, which, uh, I have no idea what this is supposed to be, but upon watching it in the video, it literally shows violence being enacted on someone of the LGBT community. And here's another bizarre video. And another one. So the claim that they were making content that crosses over the line isn't too far off from what Locarosa's initial statement was. Softy Guts got exposed for making gacha heat content. Um Oh okay, so there's a lot more I could show, but honestly I don't want to make any of you even more uncomfortable than I already am. I'm guessing that Softy was sending these gotcha heat edits to friends when they really should have been keeping it to themselves. By the name, Sparkle Afton makes gotcha content relating to Five Nights at Freddy's. However, they were exposed for normalizing pro shipping and incest in their Discord server. The staff members of the Discord server were also caught telling members to end their own lives and saying racial slurs. I also heard claims of Sparkle after saying the n-word and then suddenly deleting it after, but I can't be too sure of that claim. Sparkle claimed to be 16 and didn't know what the n-word actually meant, and the staff decided to kick or ban anyone who tried to spread awareness of Sparkle's behavior. Sparkle also made a video where they hinted to towards sexual assault happening. I wouldn't have much of a problem of a sexual assault scene being alluded to as long as it's done in a respectful way but the gacha community is primarily made up of children. After all this, Sparkle made an apology and then used religion to gaslight everyone. So this person would make uh, videos on a game that's a famous gacha game called Chibi Mation, and Har Haru Lu would make update videos regarding this Chibi Mation. The descriptions of these videos about Chibimation would be empty though and comments turned off. This was because the channel and videos are marked as for kids, as you know, they claimed. Then a user named Beowulf posted on their community tab about Harulu. 
asking for this person to reach out to them because Bia was apparently going to make a video on this person if they didn't. Two weeks after the post, nothing happened, and Harulu kept uploading videos about Chibimation to the point where Harulu became the first person in Chibimation's wall of shame on her Discord server. Only shady websites were put in and mentioned in videos too. Now onto the reason why all this happened. The first event that happened was Harulu spreading misinformation about this Chibimation topic. It was clear that Harulu wasn't a good reporter because they wouldn't be clear with what they were talking about by spreading information that was old and already debunked, or would accuse without providing much evidence. Funny enough, an example of a video I'm watching by Flo, Harulu said that Kirby was a Pokemon. Kirby and Pokemon. Okay, now regarding assets. So Chibimation was going to put these into what I presume a game inspired by the Gotcha Life apps. During a live stream hosted by Beowulf 10 days had passed since the initial announcement about features not being included. It was a Q&A regarding Chibimation, where they also talked about some of the features that were being reworked, such as the assets previously mentioned on Harulu's video made on it. It would prove that Harulu's video had outdated information. Harulu also has been accused of leaking spoilers for Chibimation, but I would take these claims with a grain of salt since not much evidence was found on this point. Harulu would leak information in the chat rooms within a Discord server where Super Boosters and Ko-Fi donors only had access to. Keep in mind that they didn't ask for Bio's permission before publicly posting these leaks. Now onto the art theft, my favorite. There's a bunch of information suggesting that Harulu has stolen assets made by other creators. These were from the gacha shop and it says if you use these to give proper credit, which Harulu didn't do, proper crediting is considered to be listing the name of the person who made it along with the link to their social media. On top of that, Harulu called the UI for Chibimation childish. Beowulf and the Chibimation team have tried to reach out to Harulu many times to talk about these issues with uh, Harulu and that, you know, they were causing problems in the first place. An apology was first made, but it wasn't a sincere one because it was full of guilt tripping and trying to justify their actions. After the apology, Harulu would block the team members, and then the apology got deleted. Harulu also blamed the team behind Chibimation for hiding their channel. After hiding their channel for a few days, Harulu came back. This is the reason why Harulu decided to turn comments off on their videos. So, Karuko made a few triggering videos about this. Then she came out with an apology video that was overly dramatic, so a standard YouTube apology video. They first talked about the what have you done meme they made and apologized for not including a disclaimer, then proceeded to say sorry a thousand times afterwards. Literally after the apology video was made, they went back to making questionable content, as well as barely changing the thumbnail for their previous videos. Also, guilt tripping central. She has also thought the R word wasn't a serious thing. How can you look at sexual assault scene or make one and say it's not that serious? They also didn't explain why they went radio silent afterwards before the apology video was posted. So this person who I'll just be calling Ota for the rest of this section made an explanation video on something. In the video, they said that 54 days ago exactly from when the video was made and posted, they made a new friend. Both of them eventually agreed to show their faces to each other, and when Ota sent a picture of their face, the other person didn't send anything back. Instead, they put the photo of the face revealed on a website. Ota then started to get strange messages from people, so they reached back out to their friend to talk about what was going on. Then the person forced Ota to make a video to fake their own death. Ota admitted that they had an account called Lee, and the account was reported to the point where of it getting banned. Ota goes on to say that an account named Otamavix isn't actually them, just someone pretending to be Ota. I really don't know what to say about this video since it's very messy, uh, in a messy situation. And the video they made didn't really show any evidence of anything happening, so I'm going to move on now.
May is someone who makes gotcha memes on trending topics. Upon first glance, they seem like a normal person. First of all, they ship their own characters with the Y N, which means your name. So they ship themselves with their viewers. Honestly, it doesn't seem out of the ordinary, but I'm going to show you a video they made with this Y N person. They deleted that video. <laughs> LMAO. Okay then, there's that. Here's another example that contains sexual assault. We do not stand sexual harassment and assault. And it's not okay to joke about it either, because by joking about it, you are offending all the people who have been affected by it. They also didn't put any warnings or disclaimers before any of their other videos that contain the serious content. Devil Bona has been exposed for tracing others' artwork. Before, people were tricked into thinking that others were tracing Neville, but then it was exposed as being the other way around. I couldn't find anything on this topic, so someone is, again, doing a good job on hiding it. Sir Crumbles has started a lot within the gacha community, but talking about the recent events that have happened, a community post was made by someone ma named A Single Pale Rose showing that Crumbles claimed to be receiving dox threats and had hurt their channel for a week or so. Crumbles said that these comments were being made in the comments of community posts, but I haven't seen any proof of these comments that exist. These claims by Crumbles could be used to explain why they went dark after they got exposed for their most recent events. Then, and this is crazy, not only were the doxing threats made up, but Crumbles was actually the one trying to dox Rose, mentioned before, by showing their face and full legal name to people that Rose barely knows at all. There has been no sign of an apology being made by Crumbles. This just goes to show how much of a terrible person Crumbles is. Coffee it was a gacha tuber who blew up because she would make trend videos and memes. The issue started to show when Coffee claimed to be the original creator of the trending topics and memes, and didn't give credit to the people who were the ones who originally made the memes. Coffee has also made a terrible trend video about a school shooting. This honestly disgusts me. So this person was hacked by another scam company. These things have happened with YouTubers clicking links they think are from companies who want to sponsor them and then end up hi hijacking the account because the link was an info grabber. All the videos are taken down except for this one that was uploaded. Okay, so throwback to where I was talking about Ota faking her own death. After Ota came back because her boyfriend was having troubles with cyberbullying. But the fucked up thing was that Deiko began to rejoice after hearing about the supposed fake death. Deiko has also been milking tribute videos that were made in respect for Ota when people actually thought she died. Toxic shippers are what others would call a pro shipper. A pro shipper is someone who ships any ship that can possibly exist, despite it being incest, abusive, or something that wouldn't work out in the first place. I'm going to read a little bit from this old Tumblr post talking about harmful ships within the communities. Because no matter where these people are or what fandom they're in, they will continue to exist and post harmful things. What is a ship? A ship, short for a relationship, is the act of pairing up two or more characters together in a romantic, platonic, etc. way. Think of a ship like actual male shipping. I ship them together, quote unquote. Not all ships are romantic. Not all ships are sexual. What is abuse? Abuse is a blanket term describing, in this case, in a relationship, when a partner is repeatedly hurting slash wrongfully using another. Abuse can range from physical, emotional, verbal, and sexual. 
Most abusers don't know they're abusing. Many victims find out they're being abused too late. Inherently abusive dynamics include rape, incest, pedophilia, it's this is a repeated and unwanted verbal, physical, emotional, and sexual acts against one or more people, and many more. And some might say that it's fictional. Fiction influences real life. For an example, let's say an impressionable person, let's say a young kid, happens to see an abusive relationship shown in a positive light by the fans. They're going to think it's a regular relationship, and they're going to go through life thinking that based off what they've seen, the dynamic of the ship was founded on is okay, because many other people in the fandom think it's okay. This can lead to huge problems down the road for this kid. Cold, nationwide, quote, real world example of this happening in case you say, quote, that rarely ever happens. Uncle Tom's Cabin, a fictional book, created a huge impact on Americans who became more empathetic towards slavery. Do not let impressionable people become complacent or non plus towards abuse. Abuse propagates itself when people who witness it do not care, don't think about it, or believe abuse has a quote certain look. This is not what caring about what you ship can do. This isn't all of it, so if you want to read it in full, I'll put the link to the Tumblr post in the description. And with that, that will conclude part three of the Gotcha Iceberg. I know this video was shorter to make, but hopefully it will be longer than my first video. Again, huge thanks to Keith is okay for letting me cover this iceberg. And if you want to see more videos like this, as well as my previous two videos on the topic, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when for when I upload next. Besides doing commentary on this iceberg, I also do speed paints. And that's one of my older ones you're seeing in the background. Anyways, stay safe, sisters.